This is going to be about Nat Turner, the slave rebellion leader um, who was born in Virginia. And he was born in Southampton County, Virginia, and died in Jerusalem, Virginia. Um, but it's no longer called Jerusalem, Virginia, um, probably because of the rebellion that he led. And so uh, they sought to sever any connection between Nat Turner and Jesus Christ by changing the name of the location of the rebellion from, um, from the original name, which was Jerusalem, Virginia. All right, Reverend David Barrow of Black Crest Church moved from Virginia to Kentucky because he could no longer support his family properly in a poor country without falling into the line of speculation or that of holding slaves. So according to historian Thomas C. Paramore of, um, he, in 1978, he did the history of Southampton. Um, he found that the Reverend David Barrow um, and instead of falling into speculation and holding or holding slaves, he decided to leave Virginia and move to Kentucky. Um, with Thomas Jefferson, he affirmed the natural equality of man and the principle that liberty was the inalienable privilege of all complexion, shades, and sizes of men. No human being, he contended, could legitimately be bound in person or property, but by laws of his own making or those of his representatives, fairly chosen. So he believed in the natural equality of men and found slavery to be disgusting. But according to um, the historian, uh, following David Barrow's departure in, 19, in 1798, uh, from Black Creek Church, churchmen tended to concern themselves with such questions as whether it was more godly to sprinkle or immerse in ritual fulmination against sins of the flesh. The question of slavery was put to rest, and ministers learned to reconcile themselves to slave owning, perhaps even to invest in a few slaves of their own. And if that church uh, could set aside the slave question, it was clear that the sister congregations must uh, stand, have a similar stand on the matter. And in 1808, David Barrow issued a pamphlet with the self-explanatory title, Involuntary, Unmerited, Perpetual, Absolute, Hereditary Slavery Examined on the Principles of Nature, Reason, Justice, Policy, and Scripture. And on page 41, this uh, minister who left the area because he was disgusted with the prospect of having to uh, own slaves said, I do most sincerely pity as well as blame those poor Christians and others who are involved uh, in the fashionable sin of holding slaves who must feel at times the scourges of conscience on the occasion and foresee the bitter consequences which do and will in future attend it, yet will plead for and hug the evil. So um, he he saw slavery as evil, and you know he kind of felt bad for the poor Christians, you know, as he called them, who decided to hug the evil rather than flee from it. All right, so Nat Turner, like I said, was born in Southampton County on October the 2nd, 1800. But he underwent um, a spiritual conversion around 1827. And he shared his spiritual experience with a white man named E.T. Brantley. And this is important. The two applied to be baptized as a local church at a local church, and when this was refused, Nat gave out that they would publicly baptize themselves. Okay, so Nat Turner, a slave and a white man, wanted to be baptized at a local church, but the church wouldn't allow it, so they baptized themselves. And um, around that time, he started to feel that he was chosen by God for you know uh, to lead the liberation of the black people from bondage. 
okay? Um, and so the rebellion was planned for August the 21st, 1831. And it was decided that, like, this, this was to strike fear in the hearts of the whites who continued to own slaves and felt that uh, they had rationalized it. You know, they went to church. Um, they rationalized it. Uh, and many of those who were murdered had just attended worship services. And this is still according to um, the historian. And again, let me give you... Um, this is the this is from Southampton County, Virginia, by Thomas C. Paramore. So, if you want to study this history further, you can check out that um, source. So, so these the victims were actually they had just attended uh, worship service at Barnes Meeting House, a Methodist church near the North Carolina line. And Reverend George W. Powell pe preached the sermon. Powell stated that on August 21st, he preached to many that were afterwards murdered and besought them to make their peace with God before it was too late. Um, and uh, obviously the people during the worship service had no idea of the urgency of the you know sermon. But this might have been due, I mean, and, and this is the, the past, this is the, um, the reverend's version of it. But um, it's speculated that it might have to do with Powell's knowledge of um, the black abolitionist David Walker's flaming call to action in his 1829 pamphlet. So the fear that might have been excited might have been from, you know, the, the call from an abolitionist to take a more active rather than passive stance against slavery. Um, and the interviewer, who is Thomas Gray, uh, is often mistaken for his father, who was Captain Thomas Gray, um, who died in the height of the insurrection. So his son, Thomas Ruffin Gray, was actually the interviewer. He was not Nat's lawyer. He was the interviewer, and he was facing financial ruin because his father left him out of his will and left all of his money to his granddaughter. Um, and we'll continue this in part two.